Hey there everyone, so this video is going to be a relatively quick and short one. This is following up on a video that I already posted that had some dubbing issues related to the video to audio. It got out of whack at some point. Like I've said many times before, I don't listen or edit to my, my videos before I upload them, so that's partially on me. It's just not worth, honestly, my time to go through it and edit. With that, the first part where it was a table join worked fairly well. I'm briefly going to go over that again, and then I'm going to go over how to grab these fire stations and join them to the county. So essentially, you want a count of the fire stations within each county in the United States. With that, the first part of the assignment or exercise was a table join. So with that, if we do this, opening up the attribute table, so right click, drop down, open up the attribute table. This is just a refresher to remind everyone that we're going to be using the GeoID as our unique ID. This is similar to what we have in our table. This data came from Social Explorer. We downloaded it and grabbed the percent of sex or sex based on the total population for each county in the United States. We grab the GeoID underscore R. We just use the text based function in Excel to extract that text from over here in the geographic identifier column. With that, this GeoIDR matches what we have in our boundary file. So we want to take the data we have here based on the population characteristics of each county and attach it to our spatial file here. So to do that, I'm going to exit out of these. I want to join this table to the county boundary. So I'm going to click on the county, right click, come down to joins and relates, and we're going to add a join. It's not a spatial join because we don't have two spatial files. It's a join because we have a table that we're joining to our spatial file here, a table to a spatial file. When this pops up, we have our first uh, shape layer, our county layer. Input we want to join based on is our GeoID. And then from our county level ACS data, we want to change this to be the geo underscore R and click OK and let that run. It's taken a bit longer than I thought, but like any other computer, it will get done. Just give it a second or two to run. With that, the key part here is it's just taking that table, it's trying to match based on that GeoID and attaching the population information to our boundaries here. So if I open this attribute table now after it's done with that join and I move to the right, you'll be able to see now I have total population, the male and female count, male percent, female percent at the same time. So this is when you can go in if you want to change the symbology come up to appearance. You can do a graduated color based on that percentage if you want. So if we want to do a symbology based on the percent of female, we can go up here once it loads over here, drop down, change this to female percent. Right now it's set at natural breaks. It's looking for truly just natural breaks in the data on based on the distribution up here. You see our low value is actually 29 going up to 58% female population. We can change that if you want to do quantile. So this actually would separate it into the top 20%, bottom 20% that way. And we can change up the ordering of it. So in your legend, if you reverse the values, the high values are at the top. And you can see our red here where the counties have a greater female population. And you can change the color scheme to reflect if you want to do a gradation over just one color. Let's do a blue one. You can see how that shows up this way. Again, if you want to flip the symbol color range, right click, reverse symbol order. So now the dark blue is our high value, our white is the low values over here. And again, since we have it split based on quantile and we have five classes for that, each one of these equals 20%. If we change the classes to 10, that would be 10% of all the counties. Keep in mind for our counties, we have about 3,200. We do have Puerto Rico and some of, I think, the territories in here as well. We did not delete those for this assignment, but in the future we will. All right, so we've done one join now. We have a table join. We took the American Community Survey population estimates for the county based on male and female sex, added that or joined that to our county layer, our boundary file here. The next step that we want to get into is we actually have another layer that came from the Highfeld managed by the DHS and open data portal for a lot of cool spatial files. We now have points representing fire stations 
across the United States, and we can see that there's multiple in many counties, we want to actually take account of how many fire stations there are in any one county. To do that, we want to use a spatial join. So I'm just going to zoom out a little here. And you can see this would take a lot of time if you try to do it by hand or anything like that. This is why GIS makes your life easier. We can ask it to count that for us and join these files together. So again, I want to join my fire stations to my county file itself. So I'm going to right click on my county. I'm going to come down to my joins and relates. And this time I'm going to do a spatial join. With that, it's going to ask me what feature do I want to join to my county layer. That's going to be the fire stations. After that, it's going to ask you for an output feature class. This is the name of the file you want, to, want it to have. So you're going to generate a new layer. It's going to be all the counties. And it's going to now have a count of the fire stations. So I'm going to drop down into my desktop, go into my courses folder, spatial analysis, spring, join data, open. And I've done this one before, so I'm just going to do county fire stations. Hit save. The key part here is the match option. So what I wanted to do is we have our counties up here. It's going to essentially you have different options. So it's not intersects, but we're going to say our target feature, which are our counties, contains our fire stations. So we're going to say contains. So that's how we're joining or we're doing a count of fire stations within our county here. So our counties contain those points. Our boundary or polygon contains those points within it. Hit contain. And for the purposes of today, because I didn't cover this in a prior video, this gives you options down here in the fields. If you want to get rid of anything, anything you don't want to take with you, you can delete them. So if I were to just click on one of these and hit X on a few, all that means is that in the new layer that it's going to create, it's not going to bring this data over for us. For now, there's no real reason to have it anyways. For If you're doing this from a class assignment, you don't have to do this part. It just makes a smaller file on the back end, but you're good to go. So if I click OK here, Give it a second to run. This is doing a bit more than just a table join. It's now going through the 3,200 counties that we have in this shape file and asking it to count the number of points within it. So how many points it contains. So I'm going to turn off these other two layers. I'm going to open this attribute table for our county level and the fire stations. And you can see at the beginning here, this join count is actually the count of fire stations within each county. We still have over 3,200 counties. And now we have a count of how many points our fire stations were contained within each county itself. So with that, we can go through the same process of the symbology. We can hop up to appearance. I say that and it's not, oh, symbology is right next to it. I couldn't see it. Uh, with graduated color. In the same way, this one automatically pulled up join count for us, so we're good to go there. And you can see this one's broken up on natural drinks, drinks again. If we do it based on, say, quantile again, our top 20% to bottom 20% are split up that way. Some have zero, and you can see our high is 404. We can split this up a number of ways, so if you want to do percentages. And then if I'm going to change the color to make it a bit more identifiable, our dark green is not shockingly, if you take a look at this and just estimate some of the area. We have LA, our Chicago area, some of the Pennsylvania and our higher populated cities. Of course, they're going to have multiple fire stations when they, within it, given the population within. So I just opened this attribute table and I did a descending count based on that. It's going to pull the top ones up and we see we have LA, Cook County, Harris, which is in Texas, I believe. Allegheny, which I'm probably butchering, but then you have also San Diego as well. So pretty cool way to look at this and get an idea of which areas are high. You can also, if you had the population or even land area, you can make a density measure or population ratio per fire station. With that, quick, easy cover of hopefully the same assignment, the same exercise, just with no dubbing issues when it comes to uploading. If there are issues, please reach out to me and let me know. I can always make another video. Just give me some time with it. Thanks. Bye.